Hey everyone, I am going to show you how to paint palm trees, like super fine palm trees. So the idea and the most important part is to figure out what brush you're going to use, what kind of point works best. It's the same thing when you're sketching it out. Do you want to use this tip or something bigger like that so depending on how big your point is that's how much detail you're gonna get on your palm tree same as with nails okay so when you're doing a palm tree you're going to take a line and this is a line that you want to practice because it's going to start thick this is a terrible mark. And then it's going to end thin. And you're almost going to like lift it to give it that, that effect. That effect of it being super thin at the end. So you want to practice doing this with your tip. If you're using a pen, You start thick, you went thin, and lighter. I guess the, the, the key would be to go lighter at the very tip. This is the line that you want to practice in order to get perfect palm trees. Okay, so practice sketching it first. Once you have it sketched and you have developed muscle memory, is what it would be called, then you can do it on a nail. So the base of the palm tree would be thicker here and thinner at the top, like so. Okay, and figure out which, which um, pen you want to use. Is it a marker? Is it a thicker, a thicker pen? If you're using something really thick, you're going to have a nice base but you're gonna struggle at the very top to get a very thin, thin, thin line. Okay. So with your palm tree, you're going thick at the base, thin at the top. Thick at the base, and thin at the top or bottom, which in this case would be the bottom. With my palm trees, I like to go in five, five directions, five stems. But rather than having it just, just in lines like this, you want to make sure that you thicken up the center and thin or light at the very tip. For the leaves, it's the same exact thing. You're going to start thick and thin. Thick and thin. This is what, in effect, you're doing. Except we're going to do it with nail polish. Thick and thin. And remember to get like a perfect line. You have to have a perfect brush. So figure out which brush you like to use best. And that's gonna give you better results. If you have a brush that's all fraily and old, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna work no matter what. You also have to have the right consistency of paint so that it, it flows right. So for example, I like to use these little brushes. Sometimes I dip them into my colors when I don't have the color that I want. But in this case, we're just gonna use black. <clears throat> so the brush will pick up paint so that at the bottom, it's thicker. You see that drop? You're gonna place it down and then go thinner and almost like up. Down and up. See how it gives you that thick to thin effect? 
if you can master this one line, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can do palm trees, you can do zebra stripes. You can pretty much draw anything, okay? Thick to thin. This is what you're gonna need for a palm tree, except it's gonna be curved. Like so. And then for your leaves, thick to thin. And you're gonna almost let the brush do the work itself. Curve it in the direction that you want. And add as many as you want. And what I find makes it look nice is if you separate them exactly the same. So like here, they're a little clustered together where here they're a little bit more separated. This works as long as they're all the same. So I can't start like clustered and then separate them because then it looks weird. Okay. <clears throat> the palm tree sketch. Marker doesn't work. Okay. Mm, I want you to be able to see the thick to thin effect. One, two, three, four, five. And then each one of those. It's gonna go all the way around. And it seems like it like it's gonna take a long time, but muscle memory. The more you do it, the the easier it becomes. Sketch it on paper first, master it on paper, and then you'll be able to do it on a nail. Sometimes what I like to do on the nail is add a, a little like base and add maybe a few little branches there. Your birds, same thing, thick to thin, thick to thin. And that's pretty much it. So let's do this on the nail. So we're going to do a nighttime one first. Uh, I did my gel color for um, ombre. This is all done in gel color. I cleaned off the inhibition layer. Whether you're painting with gel color or with lacquer like me, you want to make sure that you remove that inhibition layer. Especially when you're doing fine detail. Otherwise it, it tends to like bleed very very little but it still it still bleeds okay so I'm gonna start oh, sorry I'm shaky I'm gonna start at the base first thick to thin this is going to be a silhouette of a palm tree which is one of my more popular designs that a lot of my clients get because they can combine it with any color. So I'm going to actually put the, the leaf stems first so I know exactly where they're going to go. And then I'm going to come in with the detail. You can do the leaves on one side and you can also do them on both sides. It's a little hard to see on, on this color, but I'm gonna do a daytime one also, so you can see, so you can see it better. If you zoom in onto some of the pictures that I've done of nails, like like even the ones that I that I'm wearing, you can see that I did the the detail of the leaves just on one side. So depending on how long the nail is, on this one I was able to do both sides, but if you're working with a really short nail, you really need that that detail of the of the leaves, of the palm leaves on one side. Like so. Okay, so to do a daytime 
palm tree. Didn't get my colors ready. Um, we're going to work with brown for the stem. And we're going to work with green. If you wanted to, you can add little clouds first, which I'm going to do to give it some dimension. Okay. Happy little clouds. <laughs> Have you ever looked at clouds in the sky? They're not perfect. So you don't want to do perfect clouds. What you can do if you really want to get creative is you can take a little bit of acetone oops, oops, and a brush and thin this out on the sides to give it more of a smoky, smoky look. But we're not going to do that. Okay, same exact palm tree that we did here, but it's going to be our daytime one. So for daytime leaf, I mean daytime palm tree, thin to thick. It's always better if you start your thick line with the, with the paint because as it's releasing, it's thinning out. I did it backwards, but that's the harder way of doing it, okay? There's my base. I'm going to do my palm leaves. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna add the detail. I remember when I first started doing palm trees, this is kind of where I would stop. There's your palm tree. Have a nice day. <laughs> so the more the more you do it more you will challenge yourself to add more detail. So this is the palm leaves. And I did the, the little leaves just on one side of the stem. Less detail. Okay, so next, I'm going to give it a little bit of shimmer, some gold shimmer on the trunk of the tree, just to give it the effect of those um, of the bark. And maybe we'll add a little coconut here. A couple of coconuts. And you can keep adding, you can add birds. We can add a little bit of grass here. And this is your daytime palm tree. So I'm gonna let this one dry for just a second. Meantime, I'm going to top coat with gel color top coat on this one. So even though I did my painting in lacquer, it's already dry to the touch. I can cover it with gel color top coat. And if you want a little bit more detail, again, the same glitter that we added to the daytime palm tree can be added to the nighttime one, maybe in silver. Maybe you can add two little crystals in the center. I have one picture um, in my Instagram that I did that. So there's my top coat. I'm gonna cure that. I'm gonna check on this one. It's still a little teeny bit wet. There's also a sunset one, very similar to what I did here, where you can ombre the different colors 
Maybe we'll do it on this one. So rather than a sunset, <coughs> we're going to do a moon. A big full moon in the back. So we're going to do a half circle here. And then we're going to do lines, like the reflection of the moon. Oops. We're going to get a little bit fancier with this one, and we're going to cross our palm trees. So I'm going to wait for that to dry just a little bit so it doesn't bleed. My first palm tree is going to start in this corner, and it's going to go up in there. And the second one is going to be a little shorty. It's going to cross right in there. And I'm used to working fast, so sometimes you don't see it. But if you look closely, there's still that thick to thin line. You can also do the line first, and like I did, go back and thicken it up a little bit at the, at the bottom. Let me see if I can zoom this more. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then the detail. Again, I'm only going to do it on one side. If you could do it on both sides, like I said, I would do both sides if I'm working on a longer nail. But if it's a if it's a shorter nail and you add it to both sides, it it, it starts to like blob together. If that makes sense, you still want to see that there's five stems coming out of the palm tree. I'm going to add a little bird here. And another one here. So my little daytime palm tree is ready for top coat. Cure that for 30 seconds. And this one, like I said, if you're doing a, a sunset, um, you can use sunset colors like oranges and reds and yellows, and then you can do your sun in a bright yellow. So thank you for watching if you've made it this far. Again, I encourage you to try sketching it out with some markers. Maybe if you have paint, you can also sketch it out in paint before you attempt to do it on a nail. I've always been a believer of trying other arts to perfect your nail skills. Here's my final. Thank you so much.